Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. So I'll, we're going to um, open up tonight with worship. And uh, tonight, I just would like for you to um, choose whether or not you would like to stand or if you would like to soak in the word. And um, this song is just it's a prayer to the Lord about asking us or asking him to come into our lives and, and completely, basically wreck us. And I don't think sometimes we think about his his love and the power that he has to come in and change us. And he is that refiner. So um, he comes in, he refines us, he purifies us, he makes us more and more like him. So um, just uh, however you would like to worship tonight, whether you want to sit or stand, um, you know, take that on yourself tonight. But just worship, even if you just want to focus on the words. If you want to um, pray at your seat, if you want to, whatever you want to do tonight, um, as the Lord leads you. So let's just worship.
Hey, Peace Baptist, we wanted to come to you by video and give you an update, but we also wanted to tell you thank you so much for your generosity to me and my family and also to the Ministry of Labor Nation Education. But before you get that update, I'd like to read to you from Philippians chapter 1, Paul writes, I thank my God in every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all make your request with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the very first day until now. Yes, that couldn't be more true. Y'all have been a blessing to us since the very first time that we come in relationship with y'all. We thank y'all so much for bestowing so much of y'all's time, y'all's resources, and y'all's prayers into Every Nation Education. I want to give you an update and tell you what's happening in Indonesia. We just planted the seventh church in the largest Muslim country in the world yesterday. And we thank y'all so much because we couldn't do that without y'all. The prodigal houses in Indonesia are full. So we are super excited of what God is doing in that area of the world. But I want to tell you something else. God has opened up another door for us. In November 1st, we fly out to the Middle East, and we're expecting God to do something great in that area. We're expecting to see many Muslims come to know Jesus Christ in that area. So we ask that y'all continue to pray for us, because first and foremost, we are ambassadors of the kingdom of God but we're also representatives of Peace Baptist. So we thank y'all so much that y'all have put within us for us to go into this area and represent your church in sharing the gospel to the Muslim people. We love y'all, we appreciate y'all so much, and we look forward to being with y'all soon. Blessings to y'all. God bless. times in the journey where you just lose your all of God. You forget how powerful he is. Uh, you forget how loving he is. Um, you forget that he actually wants to walk with you daily. Uh, let me ask you, y'all don't have to answer it out loud. When is the last time, just you personally, you have seen the presence of God just drop down in your life? When's the last time that took place? Right, because I'm afraid that for far too long, the people of God, you've been saved a while, you've been walking with God for a while, you've been on this journey for a while, you just lost your all of how powerful God is. Right? We get drained, we get busy, we go through the motions, and we just don't come uh, expecting God to work. Uh, specifically in your individual life, uh, in your daily life, you don't wake up expecting God's going to work in my life today, right? Most of the time we don't because we're so busy, we're so captivated by life itself that we don't wake up expecting God is going to work today, right? And then we come to church maybe on a Wednesday night and we just go through the motions all over again, right? We 
drive here, we walk in the door, we sit down, we say hey to each other, how's your day going? But when's the last time you expected just the glory, the power of God to drop down, even in a gathering? Right? We have to get back to the point where we are in all of God again. Word? We have to get to back to the point that we're expecting God to do something. Amen? The New Testament church daily were expecting God to drop his presence down. They were expecting the Holy Spirit to draw hearts to Jesus as Lord and Messiah. They were expecting the Holy Spirit to transform their lives. They were expecting the Holy Spirit to open up doors that no man can open and no devil can close. <laughs> right? They woke up expecting God is going to work today, so Holy Spirit, make me aware of how God is going to work. Amen. You see, for far too long, and I see it. Uh, even before COVID, before election year, the people of God, we don't wake up expecting for God to work today, Amen. right? We wake up, we take a shower, we brush our teeth, we go to work. Amen. What's the last time you woke up and said, God, you're going to work today, and I'm ready to see it? Amen? Amen. <laughs> God, you're going to work today. You're going to drop down your presence, make yourself known in my life and in other lives. When's the last time you woke up and said, man, I am looking forward to God to work today? Amen. So y'all weren't supposed to see me again on Wednesday night until November. So we're going to get a head start. Uh, go to Luke. Uh, we're going to look at the prayer life of some saints, some uh, brothers and sisters 2,000 years ago. And specifically, we're going to look at the prayer life of Jesus. And you say, you know, you've been talking about prayer for the past two months. Amen? If you've been here, you know that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why do I continue to talk about prayer? Because we have to recognize the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to quit talking about prayer until we start to see God's glory fall down upon this place. Amen. I'm not going to quit talking about prayer until you come to me and say, Pastor Steve, let me tell you what God did in my life today. I'm not going to quit talking about prayer until we see a powerful movement of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Word? <laughs> so I'll quit talking about prayer when the people of God get in prayer and start seeing his glory fall down. Amen. We'll go to the next series, <laughs> which hopefully is fasting, whenever we start hearing testimonies of what God is doing. Amen? Now I'm going to try to coach you through that. So hopefully tomorrow morning or sometime tomorrow, at least one person in this room is going to see the power of God fall down upon your life. Amen. Because we forget just how powerful God is, that he daily wants to work in our lives. But you have to get in prayer if you're going to get in tune with God's hand. Amen. A lot of people, brothers and sisters specifically, aren't seeing God's power because they're not in prayer. Amen. Work. <laughs> And so we, the people of God, just have to quit making excuses and make time for God. Like I said two months ago, if you're too busy to pray, you're too busy. Amen. Word? Amen. Amen. God wants to hear from his children. So I'll go to the next series whenever we start seeing God fall down upon our lives, individuals, families, and the church as a whole. Amen. So how long are we going to be in prayer? Until God's glory falls down. Amen. And then hopefully you'll have enough tools to keep on praying even when his glory falls down. All right? So, if you've lost your all of God, in other words, listen, brothers and sisters, I know how it is to, to be in such a state where you're not motivated to live for God. It's just like you're not excited about living for God anymore. It's just like there's that, there's that loss of excitement. There's that loss of just loving obedience to the Lord. Like maybe you feel numb tonight. I mean, maybe you just don't feel too excited tonight. Come on. What we have to do and what you have to do is get in prayer and ask God to change that. Because y'all listen, I've been in those seasons where I'm just going through the motions. I'm not intentional about asking God to show me his presence. Do y'all know what feeling I'm talking about? Maybe you're in that state right now. The good news is God can get you out of that. Amen? Amen? I've seen him do it in my life. 
And I know he can do it in your life if that's you tonight. So if you've lost your all of God, get back in prayer. I'm not telling you to go home tonight. I mean, God could do it in you and pray for an hour. Go home tonight and pray for five minutes. Word? Word. Get, get back in prayer. So let's look at chapter 1. Um, I'm going to start reading at verse 6. When you're there, say Word. Luke chapter 1. We're going to cover uh, three chapters, but we're not going to read all the verses, all right? So Luke chapter 1, verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all commandments and what? Ordinances. Ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was... That while he was serving as priest, talking about Zacharias, before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense. And he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people, what were they doing? Praying. They were praying. Was it just one person here praying? It's a group of people, man. It's a multitude. All right, so keep that in mind. Outside of the house of what? Incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of what? Verse 12. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid. Who? Zacharias. Zacharias for your what? Prayer. So who's praying here? Zacharias. Zacharias. So you got multiple people praying outside. You got Zacharias praying here, and the angel of the Lord is very aware. Zacharias prayer. You got any angels that are aware of your prayers? I mean, that would be pretty cool and scary, obviously, if you're just praying and you look up and an angel is looking at you. Because we know as we study the scriptures, I mean, these are pretty powerful beings. And anytime an angel, specifically in the Old Testament, approaches a human being, fear drops down upon that human. Amen. Now, I'm not going to tell you tonight, if you go home and pray, that an angel is going to appear. But what I am saying is, it could take place. <laughs> I think that would be pretty cool, by the way. Some of you probably could use an angel, amen? That might perk you up, word. I know it probably perked me up a little bit. Amen? <laughs> Something supernatural, just standing above you and saying, I know what you're praying. Word. In other words, God himself, and sometimes even his angels know what we are praying. It's pretty powerful. I want you to meditate on it, but keep on reading. What verse are we in? 13. For your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Everybody say John. John. His name means the Lord is gracious. Word. Lord is gracious. Verse 14, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even in his mother's what? Womb. Verse 16, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go also before in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now that's where I'm going to stop in this chapter. But here's some truth here. Prayer gets us ready for God's work. Prayer gets us ready for God's work. I am tired of going through the motions. Word, like most likely... Most of us in this room, we said it's Wednesday night. I got to go to church, right? And we're here. How many of us said, man, I'm expecting God to work even on a Wednesday night in Whitewood, North Carolina at Peace Baptist Church? How many of us came expecting God to work here tonight? Right? Prayer. Listen, I would, I would encourage you next Wednesday, like pray before you get here <laughs> because it gets you ready if God really wants to work, 
for you to be in tune with what God is trying to do. Right? Amen. They're praying. Right? The multitude is praying. Zacharias is praying. God's presence drops down in the form of an angel. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And let's not forget John the Baptist. We know his story. He's fulfilling Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah and other prophetic books in the Old Testament. Listen, listen, this is God's work. He's being faithful to his promise to send a messenger to say, hey, prepare the way. Here's the Lamb of God. Amen? Prayer gets you aware of what God is trying to do. You might not be aware of what God is trying to do because you're not in prayer. <laughs> Word? If you want to be aware of what God is trying to do at peace in your individual life, in your families, it's probably wise to get in prayer. Word? The Lord has a habit of working while we pray and I mean, what if you just went in prayer expecting God to just work while you're praying to him? Amen? Sometimes we go to prayer like we're talking to a dead God. Amen? <laughs> Sometimes we go to prayer not expecting God to work as we're praying. Sometimes we go to prayer not expecting God to work after we pray. Right here, we see God working while he's praying. Word? He opens up his eyes, and there's an angel standing in front of him, church. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Do you want to see God work like that in your life? <laughs> now, I'm not saying going to send an angel to you, but I want, I want to see brothers and sisters as they're praying for God to just work on your heart and show up in a powerful way, whatever that looks like. Amen. Amen. Like, he can do it. I mean, I've been in prayer at times, and right when I'm praying, my phone goes off, and it's somebody on the line that brings up to me a conversation that I just prayed about, and they had no clue about my prayer. I mean, God can work in such powerful ways, but the question we have to ask ourselves, are we expecting him to work as we pray and even after we pray? He's not dead. Amen? God is not dead. Our prayer lives become dead. Word? God's not dead. <laughs> but a prayer life will get you in tune with what God wants to do. Amen. For Zacharias, I mean, we've read the story, some of it. I mean, obviously, they're waiting on a baby. They want a baby. And they're advancing years, Luke tells you. And the angel says, I'm not going to be a baby. Amen. Word. In other words, God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're praying for. And if it's in his will, he's going to give it to you. If it's in his will. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Little did they know that their baby boy was coming to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. You see, when we get in prayer, who knows what God wants to do? And you're never going to know unless you get in prayer. Amen. Because maybe there's some of us in this room watching. I mean, God really, really wants to work in your life. I mean, he really wants to drop his power down upon your life. He really wants to get you in tune with what he's doing in his world. But it's going to start with you getting in prayer. Amen. It's hard to know what God is trying to do in your life unless you're talking to him. Word. Word. <laughs> I mean, God really, really, really wants to work in his people. But are you willing to talk to him? So you can hear what he's got to say. Amen? Amen? So prayer, it gets you ready for God's work. Don't we see it here? What is God's work here? To send John the Baptist to say, behold, the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Just like Isaiah said would happen. Yep. See, prayer, it, it gets you in tune with what God is trying to do in this world. What is God ultimately trying to do on this side of the cross? He wants to save people. Who is God trying to put in your path so that you'll lead them to Jesus? Amen. But it's hard to see that if we're so captivated by the busyness of life. 
And it, God's not calling you not to be busy, but the, the, the thing is we get so busy that we're not leading people to Jesus because we're just not thinking about it. Yeah. Word? Word? Right? It's easy to do. I've done it. <laughs> but God is trying to get us in, in prayer so he can reveal his power to us. And ultimately on this side, it's he wants to save people. Amen. Maybe you're praying for some kind of provision and he's got it right in front of you, but you're just not in tune with what he's trying to do right in front of you. Amen? Amen. So many times, I listen to this, we pray without expecting. How many times do you think Zacharias, what's his wife's name, Elizabeth, how many times do you think they prayed? I mean, they're advanced in years. I mean, they're Getting on up there, right? It makes you uh, remember Abraham's narrative, right? They're advancing years, and they're waiting for God to give them a baby. How many times do you think they pray, God, give us a baby? Yeah, every, decades, every day. Decades, they're praying, God, give us a baby. Just imagine, decade after decade after decade, we could probably say at least 30-plus years, they're praying, God, give us a baby. And they don't stop praying. Continue. They have endurance in their prayer life. Amen? Amen? They have endurance in their prayer life. 30 plus years are probably praying, God, give us a baby. And now an angel stands before him and says, the baby's coming. Amen. But the baby is going to be used for God's glory. Amen? Amen? Prayer gets you in tune with the power of God. So the question is, are you going to endure in your prayer life? Sometimes God will work right then, but sometimes you have to pray throughout the years. Amen. <laughs> Continue to pray. Listen to this. Prayer, and I think this helps me. You don't always feel like praying. Word? <laughs> Are y'all good? Yep. Like, I don't always feel like praying. Any testifiers? Most of us in this room. Prayer isn't based on how you feel. But it's based on your relationship with the Lord. I mean, think about it. He's an old man. He's been praying 30 plus years. Do you think he really feels like praying for the baby? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but the point is this. You're not always going to feel like praying and having endurance in your prayer life, but you must. Amen. Endurance in your prayer life, man, it gets you ready for the glory that's going to fall down in God's timing. I want to give you two testimonies. We'll try to maybe give some illustration here. All right? Everybody say word. Word. You know, it's a Wednesday night. Y'all been working all day. You're getting tired. Word. Word. Two testimonies. So the first one I'm going to give you is like my call to actually speak, to preach the gospel. And the second one I'm going to give you is my call to be your pastor and how God just worked all of that out. So y'all listening? Mm -hmm. So first one, the call to preach. I was at Fruitland uh, Baptist Bible College. Uh, I was there, this is probably my 13th, 14th week there. And I was just in the small chapel praying to God, saying, God, what are you calling me to do? I've been on this small campus up in the mountains in the middle of nowhere. Apple fields are just all around me. I don't know what to do with all this knowledge you're giving me, Lord. Just please show me, and I'll do it. Whatever you're calling me to do, Lord. Uh, I really don't want to speak because I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> Right? I don't like standing in front of people. I'm very shy. I'm very antisocial by nature. So, Lord, uh, if you can, don't call me to speak, but I'll do whatever else you want me to do, right? <laughs> Anybody ever done that? Like, Lord, I'll do whatever you want to do, but just don't make me feel uncomfortable when I do it. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, long story short, I, I pray that I'm in that small chapel probably for an hour or so. Uh, the weekend is approaching. And so long story short, I'm going back to the building where the dorms are. Instead of taking a ride, because where I walk in now, you take a ride, you go through that door, my dorm's right there. You're taking a left, you're going toward the big chapel on campus and the classrooms. And as I get up there, something tells me don't go right, go left and walk toward the big chapel on campus and the classrooms. So I'm doing that. And as I'm going up the hill, because it is the mountains, mm -hmm. the vice president, Scott Thompson, is walking. He said, hey, Stephen, what are you doing this weekend? I said, I, I don't know. He said, well, a church just called me, and they need a speaker. 
<laughs> right. And I said, yeah, sure, count me and I'll do it. And so listen, for me, like God answered that prayer like five minutes after the prayer. Okay. Right? Sometimes God does that, but the question is, are we in such in tune with what God is trying to do, getting ourselves out of the way, even if we don't want to do something like speak, are we so in tune with God that after we pray, we're expecting him to give us guidance? And I think sometimes we pray a lot, but we don't expect God's really going to give us guidance. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we just go in prayer and just talk without expecting. Amen? Like God really, really wants to be active in our lives, but we really, really have to be aware of that. Right, so my father, Pastor Keys, I really struggled with it. Uh, for one, you know, I talked to Chip about this whenever he approached me in my age. Because I knew I would get backlash from some. Right? Uh, the way I speak, I'm not like the raw, you know, pastor and preacher, which I'm okay with that. If that's what how God leads people, word, right? If the word is being communicated, that's the most important thing. And so I struggle with those two areas, my age and the way I speak. But long story short, this was mine and Ashton's prayer. God, if you're calling us to do it, we pray that every age group would approach us. Right? Because I've seen pastors come into the churches and they just love one specific age group and not the others. Right? I've seen some pastors, they just love the senior adults and they forget about the young generation. I've seen some pastors, they just love the young generation and they forget about the senior adults. And I don't want to be that guy. And so our prayer was, Lord, if all age groups love us at peace, and obviously it's not going to be everybody, but we said most, <laughs> let them approach us about, hey, we think you would be a good pastor here. And long story short, almost every age group approached us in a matter of five months. I prayed for one specific person to approach me. Long story short, he did one night outside. He said, Stephen, he was a senior adult. He said, I think you'll be a great pastor. Amen? And that next morning, I gave him my resume. How do you say that? When you get in prayer, God will give you direction. Amen? Amen. Specifically to be the pastor here, I say, God, please let every age group approach me. Because if I can't pastor all age groups and all age groups don't want to need the pastor, then, then please need to find someone else. Ready and expecting God to work in your prayer life. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to tell you about every three months, I'm asking God, God, where do you want me? Because <laughs> I don't want to be nowhere that God doesn't want me. And you need to know that about every three months, Pastor Steve is praying, God, where do you want me? Because I want to have clear, clear direction. I don't want to be anywhere God's not wanting me to be. And so about two weeks ago, I said, God, if you're still calling me at peace, I need to see your hand. 10, 15 minutes after that, I get in my car. I turn on the radio, and the guy and the guy speaking on how to pastor people. <laughs> right? And so I tell you that, tell you that, like, God is at work. And I pray like that every three months because I've seen after you get in prayer, I mean, it might be a day, it might be two weeks, it might be two months. God is eventually going to give you some kind of direction. He's going to show you where he's at work, and he's going to show you where you need to be involved. Amen? Amen. Like right now, I'm approaching about four or six guys about uh, teaching on Sunday nights. Guess what? I said, y'all pray for two weeks and get back up with me. Why? Because I believe God directs. We don't need to just plug people anywhere. We need to let God do the direction. Amen? Because God wants to direct. God wants to work. And sometimes he does that during your prayer and after your prayer. The question is, are you expecting him to work? Amen. 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 Don't give up on your prayer life. Go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Let's look at verse 25. And here's a good word for my seniors in the room. Uh, God is not done with your life. Amen. I know so many times I can't imagine what some of our seniors go through thinking that God is done with you. 
Uh, but I want to show you two individuals that are senior adults that God is still using. All right? And specifically, these two senior adults have a prayer life. Or I say pause. I had two senior adult ladies at Zion Hill Baptist Church that I knew was praying for me. Amen? I would say it's probably their prayer life that got me through some stuff in three years while I was at Zion Hill. Miss Kathleen played the piano and uh, Miss Pearl Johnson, right? Kathleen Pearl. You know they seniors with those kind of names. Amen? <laughs> Word? <laughs> Kathleen and Pearl, man. Those ladies prayed for me consistently, and I knew they were. And so real quick, I just want to encourage our seniors. Um, if you're not a senior, may when if the Lord tarry, then if he gives you grace to continue to live, may this describe your life, my beloved. 25, chapter 2. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was what? Simeon. And this man was just and devout, kind of sounds like Elizabeth, right, and her husband. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the what? Consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Listen to what uh, Luke is about to write. And I want to ask you this question. Are you so close with God that you can hear him say stuff like this to you? Just think about it. God wants to speak. Amen? Verse 26. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit wants to talk to you, man. Word? That he would not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, man, I know that you know your Old Testament, Simeon, and you know a Messiah is coming. And the Holy Spirit, he's so close with the Lord that the Holy Spirit says, you're going to see that Messiah before you die. Mm -hmm. Word? Word. And he's so close with the Lord that the Lord can just tell him things and, and give him information. Word? Word. What's coming? Mm -hmm. Amen? He still does that today. Amen. I mean, I told y'all when we had that powerful service. I mean, I go back to that power, powerful service we had before COVID. I told y'all after that service, the effects were coming. Yep. The Lord speaks, right, to his people. Amen. 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 Are you that close? Do you want to be that close? Seniors, listen, the good thing for y'all is God still wants to speak to you in such ways. He's not done with you. Amen? Look at David Ransom because he's almost a senior now. Amen. <laughs> he's getting there. Yeah. Real time. You gotta lighten the mood a little bit. Right? Are you that close with the Lord that he can just say, they laugh, but they're the ones pushing me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Verse 27. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. Amen. Amen. The Spirit's leading. He's walking with the Spirit. The Spirit is a person, by the way. I know we don't talk about the Spirit like we should, but he's still walking with people and speaking with people and preparing people for what's to come. Right. Word? Word. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God. Listen to his prayer to God, Simeon. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. According to your word, you told me that I will see the Messiah before I go off to eternity. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people. Amen, Israel. So he saw the glory. He saw baby Jesus. <laughs> he said, this guy right here is the one that's bringing salvation to all people. Word? Yeah. This baby here is the one that's going to redeem my soul and your soul and any soul that have come to him in all nations. Amen? And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Verse 34, then Simeon blessed them and said,
said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be what? Yeah. Now there's much there. And my point of reading all that is not to give you like a deep study of these verses, but to show you, just give you some ob observation here. Amen? This is a man that refuses to give up on God. <coughs> Word? Word? I mean, he's a senior adult. And he says, I know what God told me. God told me I'm going to see this Messiah before I go off to eternity. And I'm not giving up on that word. Yeah. Amen? God's still speaking to people like that, right? Yeah. Right? God's still showing people something that aligns with the word of God. And Simeon's word does, right? Mm -hmm. He's pointing us back to the Old Testament. A Messiah is coming to redeem people in all nations. Right? It aligns with the word of God. The Holy Spirit is saying, boy, your time's up whenever you see the Messiah. Seniors, let God speak to you in such a way. Amen. God's not done with you. I don't care what man says to you. Look at this other lady, uh, verses 36 through 38. When you're there, say, Word. Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of what? The Newell? The Newell? Who cares, right? She's a daughter of. Let's just say P.H. Of the tribe of Asher. She was of great what? Age. Another senior. Has God done with her? No. Nope. And had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about how many years? Eighty-four years. Again. Wow. Listen to this, who did not depart from the temple but served God with fasting and what? Prayers. Prayers, night and what? Day. I mean, Miss Anna is constantly praying on the behalf of God's people. Word? I mean, I mean you can at least say she's in her 90s. Mm -hmm. Word? In her 90s and staying devoted to prayer and fasting night and day. Amen. Verse 38, and coming in that instant, listen to this, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who look for redemption in where? Yeah. Jerusalem. Amen? So this senior adult, at least in her 90s, is still praying and still declaring the goodness of God. God's not done with you, no matter of your age in this room. And specifically, don't give up on your prayer life. To my seniors in the room, don't give up. Amen? Amen? Don't give up. You see two seniors right here in Luke chapter 2. They refuse to give up. Amen? So let me, let me say this. If you always wait on the right circumstances, your prayer life will be inconsistent. Amen? Just think about the circumstances of these two folks here. Right? Simeon, he's later on in his age. Right? Senior adult, but he doesn't give up. He knows God has told him that he's going to see the Messiah. Word? Word. And so just think about all those years. We don't know how long God has told him you're going to see the Messiah. But we do know, listen to this, he knows the Old Testament. And he, listen to this, he knows, listen to this, Israel is not its own state anymore. It's not its own nation anymore. It's under the power of Rome. And for a Jew, if you study historical background, that is depressing. Amen? Because Israel is God's chosen people, man. They're supposed to be their own nation. But instead, they're under the, the power of Rome. See, listen to this. It wasn't that circumstance that drove Simeon to prayer. It's his God that drove him to prayer. And just think about the widow. How many years was she a widow? Eighty-four years. She didn't let that circumstance stop her from being dedicated to Yahweh. Amen? Don't ever let the circumstances de determine your prayer life. Amen? No matter of your age in this room, if you're not careful, you're going to let your circumstance determine your prayer life. And listen, circumstances aren't always good, and they don't always feel good. 
you can't let circumstances drive you to prayer. You just need to let God drive you to prayer. Word? Amen. Chapter 3, real quick, and we're done. Chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. And all the people were baptized. It came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he what? Prayed. Just think about it. While he prayed, the heaven what? Was open. Again, it goes back to chapter 1. While he's praying, amen? While you're praying, God can do something powerful. Do you go expect in church? Expect God to work while you're praying. Amen? Like, go to prayer. Go to the Father's throne room and say, man, God is about to work. Amen? See, if you're never expecting church, it's really going to be hard for you to be excited when you pray. Now, God can work as you're praying. God may work five minutes after you pray. God might work, I mean, we've seen it, years after you pray. The point is this. God wants you to be consumed with himself so much that it doesn't matter when he works. It just matters who he is to you. Amen? God may wait, work during, after, years after. He wants you to be so in love with him that you get to the point, you're just like, no matter when God works, I just love him. Amen. Amen. And that's why I talk to him. Listen, if you're not careful, you'll try to talk to God to get something out of God instead of talking to God because he's your father. Amen. Amen. Now, God will drop down his presence. He will drop down his glory. But make sure you're praying to him because you love him. Amen. All right. But the good news is he can work as you're praying. Amen? Amen? Look at it. While he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came out from heaven which said, You are my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. Amen? While he's praying, the Father is confirming his ministry. Amen? While he's praying, the Father is confirming his mission. Amen? Man, there's been those times I've been in prayer and the Father just confirms what I'm doing. He's confirming my call. He's confirming my walk with Him. Amen? Listen, let me ask you this. Do you know what God wants you to do? What is God, like specifically, ask yourself that. What is God trying to do in your life tonight? Because as Jesus prayed, the Father's looking at Him and says, man, well pleased. This is my son. I'm well pleased in him. Amen. He's confirming what Christ has come to do. What has Christ come to do? Lay down his life. For our sins be buried and to rise from the dead. And the father is well pleased with this mission. Right? Because it's the father that sent the son. Amen. See, listen. Truth here. You're taking notes. Write this down. Your prayer life is a good time for God to, to confirm what he's called you to do. Amen? Like, the Lord's my witness, David. <laughs> three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, around that time frame, I'm saying, God, and I do it about every three months, what are you? What do you want me to do? And I'll do it. Amen? Because I want the call to stay fresh, man. Amen? Some pastors are in it so long, they don't even know if they're called anymore. And when you do that, you hurt the church. Like, I don't pray like that because I'm trying to leave peace. I'm, try, I'm praying like that because I want God to know, I want to know from God for sure that this is where he's calling me. Mm-hmm. Word? Word? I mean, Jesus, listen, he knew that he was coming to, to save sinners from their sins, but constantly he's in prayer. And I think as we studied the life of Jesus, and specifically his prayer life, he just wants to know, all right, Father, where do we go next? What village do we go to next? Amen? He's confident in his call, but he wants to make sure he's where God wants him to be. Because if I'm not where God wants me to be, I'll hurt you. I'll hinder what God wants to do through Peace Baptist Church. But I do know when I get in prayer, God has a a tendency, specifically when I'm saying, God, where do you want me? I've seen him answer constantly that day. Because he's just that. Amen? Amen. 
The church, listen, y'all, y'all have to, we have to get back to the point where we're expecting God to give us supernatural, divine direction and quit trying to do things in our flesh. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why I've told some of these guys, hey, need y'all on Sunday night so I can get back with the youth, but you better make sure God's calling you to do it. Yeah. Word? Word? This is a place, listen, I want to lead peace in such a way well, we're praying. I'm not, not, not saying we need to be super spiritual. There's wisdom. In wisdom, we just know what we need to do. But a lot of times, we need to get in prayer and make sure we're doing what God is calling us to do. Amen. 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 So, are, are you ready to see God just drop down upon your life? Amen. 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 Peace. We have to get back to the point that we're serving the living God. Paul would tell, man, Paul would tell the church in 1 Thessalonians, like, your reputation is this. You have turned away from idols, and you have turned to the living God. Like, when God saved you and me, he didn't call us to a dead faith. He called us to a living faith, a saving faith. <laughs> Word? He called us to enjoy and have, we're saying in 1 John, have fellowship with him. This is a living relationship. But if you're like me, sometimes you just need to hear God's word preach, or you just need to hear uh, the Holy Spirit speak to you in your alone time to get the flame going again. Word? word? Jesus really wants to walk with you tonight. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you tonight. The Father wants to speak to you. The triune God is trying to walk with his people. Word? We need to return back to his voice. Amen. When will I quit talking about prayer? Never. But specifically, I'm not leaving prayer on Wednesday nights until we start singing his glory song. Amen? Amen? Here's application that I want you to just try to apply to the rest of the week. Plead. We've lost the art of pleading. Y'all know what pleading is? Like, I mean, you're just saying, God, please do this. We're in desperate need for you to do this. Plead with the Father for the Holy Spirit to draw hearts to Christ Jesus. What's a work of God in 2020? People getting saved. Amen? <laughs> Lives being transformed. For some of you, maybe some of your children, your grandchildren, your friends, right? Your son, your daughter, niece, your nephew. Like we need for God to drop down and start saving people. Yeah. Word? Because the Bible says, man, the day is approaching. What day? God's going to end human history. And the people of God, we must be pleading with God. Save people. That's why last week I called us to pray and fast last Wednesday. For who? Our children, our youth, and our college kids. Why? Because we know a lot of them need salvation. Word? A lot of them need to come back to the faith. A lot of them are perishing right now. Because somebody with a PhD told them something. We need to be begging God to do a work of salvation at Peace, at Crossroads, Northwood, Assembly of God down the road, Methodist Church. Down the road. Like We need God to do a work of salvation no matter what church he uses. We just need to see people get saved. Amen. Amen. Word? Like, plead with God. Where? Like children, they need to get saved. Youth need to get saved. College kids need to get saved. Maybe adults need to get saved. Senior adults need to get saved. All age groups need to get saved. Amen. We need to be pleading with God. You want to see God's glory fall? Start praying, God, I, I am expecting you to save people. 
I am expecting you in your time to save my granddaughter, my grandson, my son, my daughter, my mom, my dad. Expect God to do that work. And in his timing, I trust he'll do it in his will. Everybody say testimony. I'm going to give you this testimony and I'm done. I was listening to David Platt, uh, he's a pastor up in Washington. Uh, around Easter, they, he got his leadership together, and they would meet at the church on Friday nights and pray for God to save people on Sunday morning at the church during the service. Long story short, that Sunday, God saved a handful of folks. <clears throat> they said, I mean, he said, man, uh, you know, about 15, 20, 30 people got saved. And, you know, they, they said, man, let's do this again this upcoming Friday. And so long story short, man, they were doing that constantly. Every Sunday, people get saved. Like people get saved. People get saved. Long story short, they got a, they got a lot of people in their congregation that can speak different languages. And so this Muslim was driving by the church, and she said she just felt like a pull um, to go to the parking lot. And long story short, she didn't speak English. She spoke a different language. And she knocked on the door of one of the staff members at David's church. And y'all listen to this. The, the staff member spoke that language. That staff member led her to Jesus. Wow. Amen. Amen. He said, What we were praying, God, just convict their hearts when they drive by the church. Just convict their hearts. Holy Spirit, draw them to Jesus. Draw us, draw them to, to, to our church so we can lead people to Jesus. I mean, they just got desperate to see God save people, and God did. Church, I'm hearing testimonies like this weekly. I'm ready for peace to see that. I'm ready for crossroads to see that. I'm ready for all the churches in this county to see that. See that we got enough churches in this county that can fill every church. Amen. And then we have to build more. Amen? Amen. God can do it. All right, we're going to study the book of Acts. He did it. I mean, he saved 5,000 in one day. Thousands after that. Right? Some of you are living in the Billy Graham crusade. I mean, look at the people getting saved. Word? Do y'all think God has quit saving people? No. He's saving people all the time. Peace, are we desperate? Word? Are we desperate? Are we going to prayer expecting God to do something during and after the prayer? If you study the prayer life of Jesus and the disciples and these guys and gals, they were expecting. Why? Because they serve the living God. If he's so alive, then we are so alive. The good news, I'm like, maybe some of you couldn't see God. I've been like that. Anybody else been like that? Where you can't see God's hand. Sometimes you doubt if you're even a child of God. But he can refresh you tonight. Amen? He can flame up the flame tonight. Amen? And he wants to do it. He wants his people to pray. So peace, pray, plead with God. Tonight when you get home, maybe you're just going to take your family and plead on behalf of your child. Amen? Word? Like, whoever God is placing on your heart, because I'm coming like, you got somebody on your heart right now. Plead with him when you go home tonight. Plead with him when you wake up in the morning. God, please save this person. Amen? Amen. Write down your prayers. And I'm confident if this is if this his will, he'll answer it in his timing. And then write down whatever he wants you to. Amen? Amen. Let's start pleading. Let's pray. Amen. Don, you come up, lead us in a song. We'll call it a quits tonight. Father. We ask you, Lord, to save. God, I'm sure everybody in this room has that one person. Maybe it's many. God, we want to see a work of salvation. Father, the work we see in the book of Acts, right off the star, God, is salvation. That is your work in these last days. You are saving 
children, youth, adults, senior adults. You are saving all age groups. I just heard a few weeks ago of like 10, 15 senior adults getting saved. God, it's amazing of how you're saving all age groups around this world right now. And Father, we pray here at peace, God. We pray for our sister churches, Lord, Crossroads, Western Prong, Assembly of God, Northwood. God, we just pray for a supernatural movement where people are getting saved, where lives are being transformed. God, I know that many brothers and sisters here tonight, God, maybe they're just weary. Maybe they've lost excitement. God, I know something that brings me refreshment is seeing somebody get saved, especially a loved one. So God, I just pray that everyone in this room right now would experience a work of salvation in their loved ones, in their friends and co-workers. Please, God, we plead with you. The Holy Spirit has to do this work. God, give us eyes to see what the Holy Spirit is doing. Give us ears to hear where he's trying to lead us. God, it's time for our churches to put trust in your sovereign work again. To quit leaning upon us to try to fix things. God, we need you. We need your presence. We need your power to work in our lives and in the lives around us. Father, help us to lean upon you in these last days. In Christ's name, amen. Hey, Don, before you play, David, can you...